Hey guys, Brian here from Cross Coast Gaming with another tutorial for Java game development. Um, so this is going to be more of a, a 0.5 tutorial, I think is what I'm going to end up calling it. Uh, probably 2.5 in between Guess Your Number and Tic-Tac-Toe. And the reason I'm doing it is because I was thinking about uh, the next episode, which is going to be making Tic-Tac-Toe, or text-based Tic-Tac-Toe. And there's a lot of things that we still need to go over. Um, which I was planning on doing it in that video, but it would end up being extremely long. Like, it's already going to be longer than Guess Your Number, probably. Um, so I'm trying to maybe get some of the stuff out of the way in this video beforehand, um, so that, you know, we can focus on the important and more fun things in the, the next Tic-Tac-Toe tutorial. So uh, hopefully this one will be shorter than uh, the last one, and the Tic-Tac-Toe one is just a, a little primer. And we're going to be talking about arrays, for loops, double arrays, and nested for loops, which are all going to be used in the tic-tac-toe tutorial. And then in addition to using those, we're also going to go over methods next time and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to make this one quicker. So let's just start right away. And so you're going to first off start with a clear main class like I have here. And then we're going to make an integer array. And the way you do that is int bracket bracket, and then name it whatever you want. So I'm going to name mine array. And so what an array is, is it's one variable that can hold multiple um, multiple data values. So to initialize it, so we've declared it up here, public static int array. I've made the text a little bigger too, so let me know if that's better, too big, too small still. Um, so we've uh, declared it up here, public static int, and then the bracket signifies that it's an array, because if it was just this, it would just be one data value, and you could set array equals one. But since we want it to be, you know what, this, this variable name might be confusing actually because it's an array, so we'll, we'll name it um, num array. So you could set num array equals one, but all it is right now is just an integer. So what you want to do is you want to set the brackets and that says that's an array. We get an error here because you can't set an entire array of data values to just one piece of data, so in this case the number one. So we need to initialize it and say num array equals a new array of integers and we need to set the length. So how many data points are going to be in this one array? Um, how many different numbers are we going to store under num array? So for this example we'll say four. We're going to set four different numbers. Oops. New integer array with four data values. And so now what we can do is we're saying num array is an array of integers that can set four different numbers within its array. So we can say we access them like this. Um, 90. So there's four spots but with arrays and like a lot of things in uh, Java programming and programming in general, you start counting from zero. So one is actually the second part of the array. So with four spots in the array, we have spots zero, one, two, and three. So we'll make that zero. And then you can set the second spot, or number one, to something else. And this is how you access the different parts of an array. And so you can then call these, like we could say, uh, we could print out something here, system.out.println, and you just say the name of the array and then the, the index of what you want to print out. So we'll print out the index at 1. And it prints out 2. And now this kind of ties into the other part of this video I wanted to cover, which is for loops. So first, let's set the last... Oh, wait. Yeah. Let's set um, the one that we're missing here, which is spot number two, to something, um, seven. And now we're going to make a for loop, which is a loop that goes through all of the parts of the array and does something to each one. So the way you set it up is this. You just say for, and then here we have the conditions. And this is going to take some getting used to, but uh, once you learn how to set up a for loop, it becomes second nature. So we need to make an integer in here. Uh, most people call it i for int. And then we're going to set it to zero and put a semicolon. And we're going to say 
i is less than num array, which is the array we signed up here, dot length, semicolon, i plus plus. So what this does is we're making a new integer, i, and setting it equal to zero. And we're saying as long as i is less than the length of number array, or num array, we're going to do all of this code as if i was equal to zero. And then we're going to go back around, and we're going to say if it's less than number length, or num length, <laughs> num array dot length, uh, we're going to add one to i. So i plus plus is pretty much the same as saying i equals i plus one. It's the same thing. So i plus plus is going to increase i every time we go through this for loop and do everything that we write in here as if i was equal to one greater than last time. So we're just going to print out everything in our array here. Num array at i. So what's going to do is it's going to start at zero and it's going to print out num array at zero because i is equal to zero. So it's going to print out what's at zero, which is going to be 90. And it's going to go through it again and i is going to equal one because it plus pluses. So it's going to print out what's at one, which is two. And it's going to go again, seven, go again, three. All of this one for loop. So let's run it. 90, two, seven, three. And you can do more things. You can have like more than one line in a for loop as long as it's between these two brackets. So we could also say num array at i times equals two. And you'll get these like shorthand uh, shortcuts down after a while. But it's the same as saying num array i equals num array at i times two plus num array. It's pretty much like plus plus. So times equals two just means it's the it's doubling it. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through everything in the array, it's gonna double it, and then it's gonna print it out. 184, 14, 6. So that's a for loop. Very basic. And now the next part we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about, is a double array, which I call it a double array. Uh, not to be mixed up with the actual variable type of double, but just because it's an array of arrays. So the way you do that, which maybe you guessed, is another bracket. So this is an array of arrays of integers. Bear with me here. And so this all doesn't work anymore. Um, instead, what we need to do is we need to assign something here um, we'll make it a four by four. So it, num array is now an array of four arrays that each contain four integers. So 16 data values total. And this isn't gonna work because we need to set, this is just saying what array. We're saying like the first array equals 90, which you can't do. Instead we need to say the first array at the first spot equals 90. And we could say the the second array or array number one at you know the fourth spot equals two and the third array at the second spot equals seven and we'll make the very last data point three three equal to three okay now what we can do is first we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing this right here we'll print out what's at number array one or i Ooh, interesting. <laughs> um, let's make a, a nested for loop, which is the last thing I wanted to cover in this video, so I'm trying to go quickly here. So a nested for loop is a for loop inside of a for loop. So we're going to make it inside these two brackets of the first for loop. We're going to say for int j, because it can't be the same as the last one. It can't be int i again. For int j equals 0, and j is less than num array at i dot length j plus plus and again I am trying to go fast in this video so don't worry we'll cover this a little bit more in the tic-tac-toe one where we're actually making a game with it um, 
but pretty much this is the way you go through a double array with two for loops. And so I made a little picture here for you guys. So we have an array of arrays. So the first array right here that we're going through with i is right here. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And each of these spots in the array is its own array. So 0, 0 has an array of 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, the data points that are inside here. So it's kind of like a, a grid, an array of arrays. Um, I don't know if that helped you or not. Hopefully it did. But what we're going to do now to print out all of the data points in this array is we're going to print out num array, and we're going to print out the spot at array i data point j. So it'll first go 0, 0, and it's going to print out the spot at 0, 0. And then it's going to print j up 1, so it goes 0, 1. So it'll print out whatever is here, and then 0, 2, 0, 3, and then we'll go 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 3. And it'll print out all the data points in this entire array, um, which are 0 by default unless we've otherwise listed them here. So we'll do one more per for fun here. Uh, 3, 0 equals 8. And we'll make this a single digit so it's cleaner. And then we'll print this out. And we should have 16 values printed here because it's a four, four arrays of four values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And you can say 0, 0, the very first value is 9. And then the next one to be 1, 3, which is 2. So it goes 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, um, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3. I feel like I counted that wrong, but trust me. Um, and so an easier way, in fact, to, to print this out better is inside of this first for loop, instead of the one that goes through the arrays, we're just going to enter a new line. And the way you do that is just say print line, print ln, and put no arguments in there semicolon. And so print ln, what that will do is it'll print whatever you have in the arguments and then it'll enter or return to the next line. So here we're telling it to print this and then return to the next line every time. And so now what we're going to do right here is we're just going to say print. So what this should do is after every array it returns to the next line but in between every data point it just stays in the same line. So let's see how that works. There you go. That's easier to see. So 0, 0 is 9, right here. 1, 3, so you go 0, 1, and then this is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. And you can kind of see how they, they line up here, being a double array. All right, guys. Hopefully that wasn't super confusing, but I wanted to be quick. And this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing for tutorial number three, tic-tac-toe. Um, because you can kind of see that it would be similar where we're making a grid of X's and O's, which is going to be a double array of characters on the, the game board. So it's going to come in handy for next tutorial. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, leave a comment with any suggestions, critique, and let me know if you liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.